What's up, everybody? Wow, that's awesome. Anyway, currently uh, Sunday, the 7th uh, of September, maybe? I don't even know. Let me find out. Mm, September, the 7th. Uh, so, thir fr sad, uh, what was that? Thursday, my uh, neighbor Rory brought me this grandfather clock that was in shandles and it was in pieces everywhere. Um, I'll show you a picture of that right now. So, uh, yeah, so it's a pretty big mess. So I thought I'm just going to not spend a whole lot of time on this, even though it looks awesome. And I'm just going to try to slap it together and so I can call this project complete in like a day. So that's what I did. So Saturday, uh, Friday night, late, I actually completed the project. Say hi, Dexter. Hi. Say hi, Elijah. Yeah, right. Anyway, so uh, I have this thing disassembled right now, and I have been kind of playing with it. Here's the front of the clock. Um, and here is the the clock mechanism. This has a uh, a bell on it, and unfortunately, this has absolutely no markings on it at all, completely none. Now I had to make my own pendulum, and um, I did that with a couple of random components, um, such as some string. I tried some string. I tried uh, I tried this thing with a weight on it. This is an old uh, pitchfork for cooking marshmallows. Uh, that didn't work, so um, it it'll go for like about I don't know 20 minutes and it'll quit. So I thought I'm missing something. I did not have the pendulum with this at all, and I found out that there's supposed to be a little piece of uh, a spring steel that's in between this point, and then there's a little bracket that holds this point, and then those components work together to keep the swing going. Well, <clears throat> I didn't have that part or the pendulum. So I took a chunk of weight, a chunk of steel, and I attached it to, uh, to a bunch of my things here. This is just a piece of steel. And um, basically, this allowed this clock to tick-tock for a while. Elijah, I know, don't tear open this door. And uh, this allowed this thing to tick-tock for quite some time, about 20 minutes, and it would quit. Um, and so what I did is, since I didn't have any spring steel, um, I went ahead and took apart an old tape measure, which is a piece of spring steel, and basically tried to get that to work. So, um, that didn't really help. I'm still missing the piece right here, the mechanism piece, so I'm going to try to maybe make one or something. So I disassembled this today just to slap some oil on it. Got some synthetic lubricant. I'm just going to lubricate this thing up. Um, this is the, the top of it. So I'll show you a better overview when this thing's completely together, but it's pretty cool. Elijah, don't peel off too many pieces. I know it's not like that great, but come on. You eat these or what? Silly boy. You're going to ruin what's left of it. <laughs> anyway, um, I did take the front off and the arms and stuff. <clears throat> like I said, I want to lubricate it, but there's nothing on here that indicates... Um, well, who made it? And supposedly it's from, uh, um, now I can't remember. I'll have to look it up. I actually don't remember. But anyway, um, yeah. So, I gotta figure out what's going on with this clock. So if you have any idea, um, what mechanism this is, if you guys are into clocks, if you have any idea what the brand, make, or model this is, so I can find the right 
um, pendulum spring that's supposed to be on here. Let me know. Okay. We'll see when I get this thing more complete. Bye. Alright, boys and girls. I decided to just polish this up a tiny bit to get rid of a really nasty stain that was right here. So, you can see I polished it, but I left it kind of rustic, so there's still some bad spots. But check this out. So, I thought this clock was really... I don't know, this clock is pieced together, and so I don't know what goes with what, but this piece, you know, this thing actually looks like it's got a coating on it. See that? I couldn't figure out how old this thing might be. But I was looking at this piece and I thought, this feels really heavy. And if you look at the back, it's all scratched up. Check this out, I can take my fingernail, and I can actually mark this thing. So that tells me this is actually made out of lead, believe it or not. This is a chunk of lead. So that tells me this clock is pretty old if this is a chunk of lead. When did they stop making lead components, you know? Very, very interesting. So anyway, I just thought I'd share that with you. I found that quite interesting. Alrighty, well, <clears throat> while I had the opportunity, I thought I'd quickly show you kind of how the the bell rings on this thing this does keep time and it'll rail, it'll ring the bell depending on when uh, when the hour is so there's two weights in here this weight is for the bell <clears throat> this weight is for the clock mechanism so there are two different weights um, you can wind them both from the front here through the front plate which has holes in it now <clears throat> this bell like I said will ring on the hour and the notches that are cut in this gear right here and this lever determine what hour it is. So you can manually ring the bell by pulling this string right here. You can see what happens. So it's currently 12 o'clock. Um, so what happens is when you when you drop this lever, okay, this lever opens depending on how far up it goes on this um, notched gear there. And then whenever um, the process starts happening, let's see where the lever actually goes. You can see that this lever pulls that forward, and when it gets to the top, it stops. So let's see. Here's where the oh, right there. There's where the bell gets pulled back. You can see that. Too much light. Let's do it again. Right there is where the lever gets pulled back and actuates it. There's a little spring tensioner right here. And uh, like I said, this is what determines the bell ring. So if I move this forward, um, there we go. Move this forward to the, this will be the two hour mark, I think. Oh, one hour mark. <clears throat> and then move it forward again. There's the one hour. Three hours, it just was off a little. Anyway, <clears throat> pretty cool. Very simple, actually. There's only just a few pieces of mechanisms in here that make this thing do it. There is like a flywheel. Um, you can see right here is a little bit of mass on this and it acts as a flywheel to keep the momentum I guess to pull it all the way back. Elijah, I'm gonna shut this. We're going to end up breaking stuff. Anyway, so I just thought I'd kind of show you that mechanism. It's pretty cool. What do you think of that? Yeah, you don't know what to think. <clears throat> okay. I'll put this thing together. Alrighty. Well, there it is. I put it back together. Um, I don't know if I can get a full shot of this thing. There you go. Go over some of the details here on this thing. Um, I cleaned the stainless. Hopefully it will actually take on a, um, that doesn't look too bad. I didn't want to shine it up perfect. I wanted it to be kind of rustic a little still, so. Uh, I actually, 
I needed a bigger piece of spring steel instead of this um, piece of uh, spring steel I took out of a uh, uh, tape measure. It's too too thin. So I thought, what else do I have around the house that's made out of spring steel? And I actually grabbed a uh, hacksaw blade and I, I dremeled it down to where it was thinner and it fit on that slot on the back. And then um, I, and I moved this darn thing back. I should have left it out so you guys could see it. Uh, but you can kind of see it. I'll see if we can get up in here. Um, I actually took and dremeled down the saw blade. See the saw blade? So the saw blade's just hanging, and then I took this original rod that I had and broke the, uh, on accident, broke the hook off of it. And uh, so then I just flipped it upside down, and uh, since there's a hole in the drill blade, I actually um, took the my Dremel and cut a round notch um, in the iron here, and then wrapped a wire through that hole at the end of that saw blade. So, um, this is the door, the back of the door, it's pretty sweet. Um, it's actually got a skeleton key on the side, and uh, a lock. I do not have the key for this, but you can get it open by banging the back side of it, it'll unlatch. So, I've just been closing it to the point where it's about right here. Elijah hasn't figured out how to get it open yet, so... Um, I am going to get some teak oil and just go over this thing with some teak oil. Um, you can see the bottom has been weathered quite quite badly. Um, the side of this whole thing has been weathered quite badly. It looks like it's gotten wet a few times or it's splitting all the way down. Um, this is actually veneer on here, which the whole thing's not solid. It's a piece of veneer, so it's kind of interesting. You can see how dry it is. It's been cracked. Um, I don't know. Look at this. Uh, tell me what you think. I mean, wh who the heck is this? And what's this guy represent? Get real close to see all the details of this guy. I don't know. Don't have a clue who this guy is supposed to represent. Some of the detailed wood hand carvings here. Um, some of the symbols, maybe somebody will recognize this. I'm actually curious to find out if anyone has any idea where this may have came from. Um, Belgium is what I got told. So, look at the details on some of this. Uh, this is kind of unfortunate, but hey, that's what you get when it's old like this. I don't have a clue. There's that one. This one over here is uh, maybe more helpful to determine what's going on. It's got like a bag or something he's wearing. Um, I don't really know. He's got gloves on. But anyway, there's some uh, pretty cool. <laughs> this thing is really actually pretty awesome, considering when I came home it was a pile of trash. I mean, literally, it looked awful. You can see here, this has been like redone where this one's like dry rotted or not dry rotted but dried out so I'm gonna get some teak oil and just oil this thing up and uh, call it done this is a very well known uh, symbol but I cannot remember what it means um, I'll have to go look it up but this is a very well known emblem so um, I, it actually has been running for almost an hour so I believe I fixed it the only thing I'm gonna have to do is uh, adjust the weight up and down to get the timing right and I do not have any winding keys look at this thing I mean this thing has been used a lot for the brass plate to be wore down that much <laughs> it's pretty crazy alright that's it what do you guys think about this old clock and uh, let me know if you have any information on it I'd love to know um, from my understanding this thing was pieced together because there's actually another base that goes on this and it looks really ugly. It makes it another four feet tall almost. And um, I didn't like it. I like this being the base. And it's on this towel right now because we're painting the walls so I can slide it around. But uh, the back plate is not uh, original at all. It's just been screwed on there with some new 
um, new style hinges. You can see they're like galvanized, so the back plate's been added, but uh, anyway, pretty cool. I always wanted a grandfather clock. My grandpa had one, and um, I always used to get to wind it up with him as a kid. And I've always wanted one, and I will tell you this, this is one unique clock. And this knob does not fit at all on this thing. It is just ridiculous. I'm going to get me a different knob. <laughs> Matter of fact, it may not have had a knob on it at all originally. Alright, peace out guys. God bless you guys. Have a good day. And just uh, totally a random video today, but some of you will very thoroughly enjoy it. So, alright, peace and love. Laters.